like a CPU sandwich. Oh, sh I don't know if I've got the right bits. Oh, this video is getting so complicated. Whoa, whoa, oh my. It's finally time for me to build my first ever fully water-cooled gaming PC build. In this video, I'm going to build a custom loop build with an RTX 3080, a Ryzen 9, and even a water-cooled SSD. We've picked up a load of HydroX water-cooling gear from Corsair for my first ever custom loop. So buckle in because this video is going to be a bit of a journey. On your screen now is a contents. So if you'd like to navigate to any particular bit, then feel free to do so. But without any further ado, I think we should probably dive into this. Let's kick today's video off a bit differently by giving you guys a quick rundown on all the components we're going to be using. At the heart of the build is an RTX 3080, specifically the kind of flagship Asus ROG Strix card. This is widely regarded as one of the best on the market right now. And as a bit of a sweetener uh, today, Corsair have a brand new water block specifically made uh, to support the ROG Strix 3080. This is their XG7 RGB. It's got some RGB on, which means it's going to look sick. And of course, it allows us to custom water cool our GPU. On the CPU side of things, we've got an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, which we're going to be water cooling with this XC7 uh, water block. This is white, which matches with our overall build aesthetic. And don't worry, I'm not actually going to spoil the overall look of today's build until the end of the video. So don't panic. We've also, of course, got plenty of fittings from Corsair to allow our water cool to happen. I'll link every single individual fitting that we use in the final build uh, in the card section now. That article is a full guide, has all the details about what we're doing today. Corsair have very kindly sent over some of their softline tubing. If you'd like to see us hardline this system, stay tuned for a part two, maybe, I don't know. And uh, we also have a Corsair XD5 uh, RGB. It's a white reservoir uh, and pump combo. That means it's going to store all of our liquid today, which is on the shelf just behind me, uh, but also pump at the liquid throughout our system to keep things nice and cool. To actually cool the liquid down, we've got some radiators. Specifically, we've got a pair of 360 mils. These are exactly the same as what you'd find on a 360 mil all-in-one cooler, but we've got two, and we're gonna run the tubes ourselves between each of the components in the loop, which we'll cover off a little bit later. As if we didn't have enough water cooling to contend with in today's video, we've got their XM2 and their MP600 core. This is one of their latest MVME M.2 drives, it's PCIe Gen 4, and this SSD water cooling kit, which will allow us to water cool the MP600 core. Oh, this video is getting so complicated. Finally, we've also got uh, a motherboard today. Of course, we have a motherboard today. Specifically, though, this is the NZXT N7. Now, the reason I didn't go for X570 is because it's about out of date nowadays. And this B550 board with its uh, Gen 4 NVMe support is going to be a great choice. I used this NZXT board in a recent video, so check that out in the cards section now. But all in all, really nice board. It's going to look great, I hope, in today's gaming PC build. Finally, just to cover off the last little bits, uh, case-wise, we've got the Corsair IQ5000X. We've also got 32 gigabytes of Corsair's Dominator Platinum memory. And as if that wasn't enough, we've got not one pack, not two packs, but another two packs. We've got four packs uh, of Corsair's QL series fans. So we've got 12 fans in total. We've got 12 QL fans, which costs a fortune, believe it or not. So um, let's see if those are worth it a bit later. Now we're gonna kick off today's build uh, by getting our motherboard ready and I think actually putting on the CPU water block, then we're gonna water cool the GPU before we go ahead and actually put the whole system together. I'm a huge fan of this NZXT motherboard with included and super fast Wi-Fi 6, a built-in rear IO shield and some M.2 heat sinks, which for obvious reasons today, we're not gonna be using. It looks great, especially with all this nice shielding and all that good stuff. Uh, we're going to be coupling it, as I say, with that Ryzen 9 5900X. Keep your eyes peeled for some CPU specific benchmarks a little bit later on uh, as well. Oh yes, look at this thing. So this is our CPU water block. This is where our tubes and our liquid are going to flow through. You can kind of see the fins as well in there if we get a nice little close up. Uh, and that's what really helps with heat dissipation and the heat transfer, making sure that uh, the liquid can actually cool our processor down. Just gives it that extra bit of contact as well. You can see we've got some pre-applied 
five thermal paste, which is a nice touch. But first, we just need to check our CPU cooler mounting hardware and get it mounted on our Ryzen 9 processor. Whoa, so you can now see without that bracket, this is even more extreme than a CPU cooler. We've literally got the acrylic uh, of the actual cooler design. We can see the RGBs under there as well. That's quite a nice little touch. And then in theory, we just replace it with this included AMD bracket. The finish on that is gorgeous as well. It looks phenomenal. There we go. That is now on and looking a lot more like an AMD mountain hardware. Awesome. So with that on, we just simply use the included backplate that comes uh, with your motherboard. And then these two simply just connect with our motherboard wedged in the middle like a CPU sandwich. <laughs> With the water block on, I think what we're then going to do is just pop some compression fittings uh, onto our CPU water block. I think this is the right step. We'll definitely find out later. I'm screwing into acrylic, so I don't want to kind of over tighten these, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've not monumentally cut this up just yet. And then in theory, a bit later, for anyone wondering how this is going to work, we simply take the top part of the fitting off. Our soft uh, tubing is just going to pop over that and then our compression fitting, it's all in the name really, just tightens up and secures the tube into place. In theory, while we're here, we're just going to pop the RAM in as well, uh, which Editor Jake very nicely packaged up. Action replay. Oh, hello. What's going on here? And this, for anyone who's ever built a PC, is obviously going to be a complete piece of cake. The next thing we're going to do today is tackle our SSD. Now, as if Corsair's MP600 core wasn't fancy enough with its Gen 4 speeds uh, around 5 gigabytes per second, but we'll test that a little bit later, they've also released this. It's the XM2, and it's a water block for the M.2 drive. This is completely overkill, yes. But what it does mean is that we don't actually need to use the included heatsink anymore, which to be fair, is actually fairly bulky. That's not to say the XM2 is any more compact, but this heatsink is fairly hefty. So it'd be nice to swap this out and just give a bit of a wow factor, I think, at least for today's system. And you can see here exactly what we're talking about. So this heatsink here is what replaces uh, the existing cooling solution. And then this is the M.2 SSD backplate. Oh my God, Th this is a bit of a brute force jobby if I'm being honest with you. Oh yes, there we go. Right, so we've freed the actual SSD from the backplate, but our thermal pad and the heatsink are still on. So not entirely sure how we're gonna separate them. That actually wasn't too bad. You can see the actual core of the MP600 core uh, with the Fizon SSD controller as well. There's a lot of chips on that bad boy, look at that. And then in theory, the SSD just drops into place quite nicely, but we need to check our orientation. So the drive's kind of gonna sit this way in the motherboard. So I think we want the actual SSD holster to sit like that to make sure that the writing's the right way round because that would be a mistake. There we go. The bottom side is in and in theory, the heatsink then just sort of clips very gently. Oh. So far then, so good it seems. This is not proving as difficult as what I might have imagined, which is obviously a good sign. And the M.2 drive is going to slide in. Look at the size of that. That's absolutely insane. It's going to look awesome though, I think. Uh, and I'm liking the two-tone aesthetic of this system already. The motherboard assembly, as we're going to call it then, is started to look pretty good. And I think before we move this into the case, it's it's time to put the water block on our GPU. For those of you that don't know, this is the process of removing the existing cooler. So we just have the PCB and the memory chips and the VRMs and all that good stuff and replacing it with this, our water cooled solution, if you will. So the water's gonna go in here and come out here and then flow through the block and in theory, cool the graphics card down. This is, I would say, the most risky process of any water cooled system, apart from the, the bit with the water, which is also quite risky. That's quite a big bit, isn't it, actually? Um, however, this graphics card is not mine. It's currently probably going for about two grand on eBay and I've got to water cool it. So yeah, let's do it. Oh, that is a work of art. Look at that thing. And Corsair, by the looks of things, pre-install all the thermal pads. Uh, these are what we need to make contact between everything on the GPU that needs cooling uh, and the actual backplate, which is very nice of them. So this is great, especially for the beginners out there. I cannot explain how good this thing looks. I think it's RGB as well. Is that Capellix maybe at the top? The backplate's quite cool though. Pretty simple, got a nice little Corsair logo on. This build's gonna have a lot more Corsair logos than what I'd anticipated, but that's fine because they very kindly sent over all the water cooling gear to a complete and utter novice. Um, so <laughs> it's kudos to Corsair. Oh, I need a tool. We need like a um, screwdriver, like a- Oh, shit. 
I don't know if I've got the right bits. Two seconds later. So we have sort of interrupted today's video because um, we haven't got the right screwdrivers to take apart the graphics card. So we're going to head to the local hardware store here in the UK called B and Q, and hopefully. Uh, we can find the right things and carry on today's build. I have no idea if this is the right set. I think it might be. It might be a little bit too big, but it's all we could find. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, we've done it. Go on then, look at that. So it's these little silver screws we've got to remove and you can see it fits like a glove. Beautiful stuff. So let's go ahead, proceed and unscrew all of the screws on the top of the cooler. Try not to lose them and go from there. Oh yes, there we go. So the back plate is uh, removed. This is what we're gonna replace with this back plate right here. But I think it makes sense to put the front of the cooler on before we go ahead and do that. I'm just a little bit stuck as to how the rest of the GPU actually comes apart. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I think we need to take these off at the back of the actual GPU. I think that is what's holding the whole graphics card into place. Yes. Oh! Oh my goodness, oh my god, oh my god, there we go. Whoa, oh my goodness, this is, this is horrific, this was a horrific experience. I didn't enjoy this at all. Right, let's take off the, um, the fan. You can see here we've started to clean down our graphics card, ready to apply uh, the water block. The GPU chip itself, the bit that says NVIDIA all over it, is the most important bit from a cooling point of view. And that is looking pretty pristine uh, in my view. And you can see, of course, all the memory, VRM chips, all that good stuff uh, around here. Just need to clean off this row of chips, I think, because this is where you can see the most residues left from the thermal pads that were there before. As I mentioned earlier, Corsair have kind of pioneered uh, pre-applying the thermal pads in the right places, which makes water cooling that bit easier for the rookie out there, like me. Uh, and their online configurator tool, the Hydrex configurator, is awesome. It's not sponsored or anything like that, but I'll link it in the description below because it helped me out loads. And it's the reason I opted to go for Corsair over, say, Alpha Cool or another water cooling supplier. According to the instructions, we then want to place the actual water block face down on the box and then simply kind of pop the graphics card on top in the appropriate location so in theory all of these screws should just line up without too much of an issue would you just look at that. That is absolutely awesome. What I'm actually going to go ahead and do as well is just pop in two of our stoppers uh, just into the GPU for a moment's time to make sure when we screw our fittings in we don't have any holes and water goes everywhere. So you've got four ports, you've got two on the bottom, two on the top and obviously you've only got two tubes. So let's just pop off one on each side and, uh, and save ourselves any hassle later on. Here we go, so we've water cooled a lot of the components in terms of water blocks and stuff, which means we can probably go ahead and move things over into the case today. And this, my friends, is no ordinary chassis. This is, of course, the Corsair IQ5000X. We just need to do a little bit of prep, so we're gonna change out the fans for the Corsair QR ones we talked about earlier. Gonna remove some of the uh, interior mounting options and go ahead and get the motherboard in before we start putting radiators and pumps and water cool in and doing all the exciting stuff. Ladies and gents, you're gonna have to ignore the messy desk, but before we go and put the fans into place, I think it's about time uh, we install the radiators today. Today. Now we've got two 360 mil radiators, which should be more than enough to keep our GPU, our CPU, uh, and of course the SSD uh, nice and cool. The latter's not quite so important. This is the XR360. Uh, the idea is to put one here in the kind of horizontal on-show layout and then put another one at the top with some Corsair QL RGB fans all around, which is quite exciting. Let's do this. <laughs> I did forget, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to flush radiators. Now, apparently these Corsair ones are pretty good, uh, but to be safe, we're gonna flush it out, make sure there's not too much crap in there, uh, and then we're ready to go. I can't remember if you can use normal water for this or not, but I've got plenty of coolant, so I'm just gonna use the coolant instead. So a bit of a progress update. You can see all of our radiators, fans, and motherboard are now nicely installed, and we can move on to our pump res combo. This is the Corsair XD5 RGB in white fits. Once again, 
with the kind of two-tone aesthetic uh, of today's water-cooled Strix 3080 build. Uh, and this is gonna be what holds all of our liquid, AKA the reservoir, and then pumps it round the system. And all of that's in one unit, which is mega, mega helpful. Keeps things simple for the first time water cooler, like myself. Corsair actually include a 120 mil fan adapter bracket. Uh, that's these four holes here, and also a 140 millimeter larger bracket. And this allows you to convert any fan mount or any rear of a fan or any radiator. Uh, basically anywhere that a fan fits, this can fit in. And you do get some adjustability as well. You can loosen these up and kind of slide it across. Really get the position in exactly how you want it. I think we want to push things to the max. Uh, and we're going to pop it on the back of the bottom fan down here. And mountain wise, I think that's going to look pretty good. Happy days. So we spent a bit of time getting all our fittings into place and you can see we've used a combination of compression fittings of course on the end of everything uh, as well as 45 degree rotary and 90 degree uh, rotary fittings as well. I'll link all the fittings used in the description below. To give you an idea of the loop we're going to go for, we're going to go from our back radiator into the pump res combo, out the pump res combo into the graphics card, graphics card to M.2 SSD, M.2 SSD uh, to our CPU, CPU to the top radiator, radiator to the back radiator, and then back into our pump res combo. Now to actually do this, uh, we've got some of Corsair's XT softline tubing. And the way this essentially works is you get your tubing out, you figure out the approximate length of your run. So here we want to go from about there, give or take to around about where my finger is. We're then going to cut our tubing and then take off the end of our compression fitting. Now this is one of the first times I've done this, so I'm not going to pretend like I'm some sort of expert. Uh, I know what some people do is put this in kind of warm, soapy water to actually make the end more malleable but we're going to go in sort of as is to begin with and see how that ends up for us that seems to have worked quite well and then the end of the compression fitting just pops over our aio tube tightens up and compresses and in theory we are of course going to put like some blue towel and stuff below each fitting to prevent leaks but in theory that's in forgot to put the end of the compression fitting through the tube because of course we haven't got the other end to thread it over. Pop that onto our fitting and tighten it up. That run is maybe a little bit long, but actually I'm not too worried about that at this stage. Maybe we can make it a bit fancy, make it a little bit curved and turbulent. I know. This looks ridiculous and it's probably pretty stupid. But I mean, come on, who wouldn't have a PC that looked like this? If we're gonna do soft tubing, I wanna make it look sick. So we've got one more run to do from the outlet of our CPU to the inlet on our radiator. And then basically our loop is ready to, to be turned on for the first time. I'm, I'm really nervous. I've, there's a Ryzen 9 and a 3080 in here. This system's like 5K. The last of the tubing runs actually turned out to be one of the most tricky, completing our loop with our CPU and radiator all nicely connected up. I've got to come clean with you guys. The first attempt at filling our pump res combo didn't quite go to plan. I put a filling tube in thinking I was clever when actually the better way to do it was just to take uh, the fill bottle and putting it directly into the reservoir. Uh, and we did have a little bit of an overfill error. But apart from that, so far it's gone pretty smoothly. We're ready to power the pump up, get that liquid flowing through the system. But of course, remember if you're doing this at home to turn the pump off before it runs out of water and refill it so we're not running it on empty. That will not end. Wow. In three, in two, in one, here we go. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that was the most satisfying thing I've ever seen in my whole life. You can see some of the water is starting to come back into the reservoir uh, because of course we've not got that pressure to keep pushing it all the way through. So let's top it up and turn the pump back on and go from there. And here goes the second round of pumping. Here we go. Go on. Don't let me down. Yes. We very nearly made it all the way through, but not quite. So a little bit more water and then I think we're going to be good to go. And again, final one, I think this is going to be. Here we go. Oh, this is so nerve wracking. Yes. 
Oh, I hope we don't get any leaks. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I've got to say, it's far from finished, but so far I am in love with this PC build. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and get all the bubbles out of the loop. We're going to leave the pump running uh, for a good few hours. Make sure we've got no leaks, but so far I think we're pretty good. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to go ahead and plug up all of our power cables so we can actually boot the system up. Because at the minute, the only thing that's on is the pump. And that's just flowing liquid through a load of components that are turned off. So let's go ahead, plug all of our power cables up, and then boot this system up and see how good it looks. With all that RGB, the best really is yet to come. Let's do this. Some stuff. I think we can all agree just how fantastic this gaming PC world looks when it's all booted up. The system looks incredible with that RGB all nicely synchronized and of course our custom loop in there for good measure. This build was actually a lot easier to put together than what I'd initially expected. It did take a lot more time than a traditional non water cooled build of course and a hardline system which is something we're looking to try soon will of course take quite a piece longer. The water cooling though went pretty smoothly planning the runs out is a lot easier when you've got soft tubing but I definitely recommend you pick up a good array of fittings to make your life a bit easier. There's areas in the case uh, where the runs are a little bit tight and tubes sort of come from nowhere and that's where the fittings as you saw earlier really helped us out. We didn't have any leaks either which is a huge bonus. Uh, of course if you take your time with those compression fittings leaks are actually fairly unlikely uh, so don't be too scared off if you're looking to water cool your first system. Let's take a deeper dive though into the world of performance and see what kind of FPS figures we can get on this insane PC build because I know that's the bit you guys are all waiting for. First off on your screen now is a summary, a snapshot view of all the different games we tested out today so you can get a really even idea of the FPS basically across the board. If you'd like to see the full unedited gaming benchmark runs of all of our builds, subscribe to our benchmarking channel called Benched in the card section now. Let's take a closer look though at some of our focus titles, kicking things off with GTA 5. In Grand Theft Auto 5 at 4K high settings tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, we got 157 frames per second on average. That's a pretty astounding result, 157 frames a second. Of course, this system is decked out to the max, uh, but still very positive. We also tried out Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War, the multiplayer zombies mode, and at 4K high settings with Nvidia's fancy DLSS tech enabled, something I definitely recommend you turn on, and we got a staggering 133 FPS on average, with 103 and 93 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results. That's over 100 frames per second at 4K, which is slightly bonkers. And 4K is definitely the resolution that I'll be using this system for. There is literally nothing better in my book than gaming on a 4K monitor and getting all of that incredible detail. You'll be glad to know that Apex Legends is our next title and it's a similarly positive story. At 4K high settings, we got around 144 frames per second on average and the game visually looked fantastic. The system stayed pretty much the entire time above 114 frames per second, averaging out at more like 140, which is bonkers. Talking of bonkers, Valorant, probably the easiest game in our benchmark roster today, but very popular. Here at 4K high settings, we got 328 frames per second on average, with 294 and 278 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results, and visually, as expected, the game looked great. This is to be expected in a game like Valorant, but nevertheless, to get 300 odd frames per second at 4K maxed out settings is pretty incredible. We did of course test Cyberpunk 2077 as well, and it's the next title today. 4K in Cyberpunk looks absolutely bonkers, and the frame rate here is really helped by that DLSS tech. In fact, that AI resolution scalar is what saves us in Cyberpunk, giving us 62 frames per second on average, with 56 and 49 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results. 
This is why my preference is still towards NVIDIA GPUs for all of my personal rigs as DLSS and ray tracing, even if you only use them now and again, are some quite big things to miss out on if you go for an AMD card. Finally then, the last game we tried out today was Fortnite. And you'll be glad to know we did this at both 1080p competitive low settings and at a higher resolution, higher setting option as well. Let's kick things off at 1080p competitive settings. Uh, these are where you tune everything down to low, set the render distance to far and disable DLSS. Here we got some great results, 238 frames per second uh, on average to be precise with 90 and 99th percentile results that also looked great. Uh, dropping down to 212 at the very low end of the spectrum which is a phenomenal result. At 4K high settings we got 164 frames per second on average with 150 and 134 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results. As always, tested with both MSI Afterburners Reva Tuner and NVIDIA FrameView. So if you want that vision experience and still want a decent frame rate, you're more than able to achieve it. And on that note, that pretty much wraps it up for my first ever water-cooled gaming PC build. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a big old light rating, a lot of effort, time and energy and money went into this one. So we hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching though. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.